og så Rachel Kite. Vi ska nå fortsätta och diskutera framväxten av förnybar energi i framväxande ekonomier. Vi ska få upp tempo lite. vi ska ta med oss våra förre inledare och någon av de bästa på fältet i Norge. Ta väl emot Jon Andersen junior, CEO i Skatec, Torgeir Lien, koncernchef i SM Power och till att leda ordet David Hansen, direktör i Telenor Norge och tidigare politisk rådgivare för utvecklingsministern under Bondvik 2. Önskar dem välkommen. Well, they say three is a crowd, but we're even more than that, so we will have to jump directly to the discussion. Uh, Torge Lien, you represent uh, really the old energy solution for Norway, but uh, how much of the future is it into hydropower? And uh, why aren't hydropower higher up on the agenda at a conference like this? You know, hydropower is the mother of all renewables. It's a technology, it's 100 years old, but it's still extremely efficient powerful and very long-lasting. 98% of the water going through the turbines is retained, so it's extremely efficient. We are also dependent on electric power. People need power every hour, all day long, every day, year in and year out. It was shown here on the screen earlier today. Hydro offers the unique feature of being flexible. Not only can it store power in the day, in the night, in the day, and produce it at night when the sun stops shining or the wind fades out. It's also offered grid services, not that often taken up in for us like this, but it's very important services like backup power, frequency control, these things that maintains a stable grid. Private diesel generator is today's backup solution in most developing countries. Still being the most expensive the environmentally least friendly generation available. Private diesel generators is what keeps Delhi alight when the backup, when the backup in the central grid kicks in, when that goes flat. Stability and reliability in supply grid operations, making the diesel generators obsolete, is from a clean air and a climate perspective one of the most efficient measures available in my view. In addition, it fights poverty. Stable grid supply offers the same feature to the rich as to the poor. The diesel generators are normally bought by the rich. So I th still think it has quite a future. But uh, Jon Andersen uh, from Scottex Solar, you represent a rather strange alternative coming from Norway, far up north, <laughs> trying to uh, be uh, pitching in on solar energy on the global scene. I mean, we, we can all understand Norway as the old hydropower nation, but, but uh, with solar energy, how do you feel being the Norwegian uh, alternative in, on the international scene? Well, I, I think there is a strong solar energy heritage in Norway, uh, given the short uh, lifetime of this industry. I think we build on you know, um, well-demonstrated capabilities in Norway when it comes to project development, when it comes to project finance, when it comes to understanding an energy sector, when it comes, when it comes to understand infrastructure. Those are relevant for all the countries that we, that we work in uh, around the globe. So we don't feel in any way that we are handicapped by, by our heritage. I think we see that in most of these countries these days, solar energy is chosen simply because it is the most attractive solution. It's, it's relatively simple and straightforward. Um, you know, it's cost efficient. Uh, it's very easy to deploy rapidly, which I think is often underestimated. You know, we can build a sizable solar park in, in six to nine months which makes a lot of difference in, in many of these countries. So you can make an impact within a relatively short period of time. And if I may say so, coming from Norway with the heritage that we have, um, we are often viewed as a very reliable business partner. We are transparent. What you see is what you get. And I think that's true for, 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 for what, the, what is being done here also from, from Target and others. So I think it's a good starting point. We understand energy. But the markets that you are trying to uh, enter, uh, you have a representative from uh, a governing party uh, in one of these markets. I mean, seen from, from the market side as a, 
uh, as someone trying to move into these markets, do you see it as predictable enough to invest the kind of money that you need to convince your investors? No, th this is the key question, of course. Many of these projects that we look at on a, on a global scale, all of them works perfectly in Excel. Uh, and the key issue is to make them bankable. That's really where I would encourage you know, both local governments as well as international organizations to spend the dollars. Because you know, one dollar spent on achieving bankability will trigger you know three, four dollars from the private sector, mm -hmm. and in this way we can combine the efforts of you know private initiatives and, 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 and public support in an intelligent way. There is no need to put public money into the project, but bankability is really the key, and that's where we need to find you know common grounds and mechanisms that can drive this this uh, sector forward. Mm. Narendra, uh, representing uh, a huge market so many opportunities. Uh, you probably have many of these uh, uh, different players knocking on the door, but also some complaining about uh, things not being that predictable. What are the things you really want to offer in your marketplace? Well, we are offering a market, and we are looking for $200 billion investment. India is an extremely complex country. We, are a, we have a theatrical structure. If you take a plane, land in Delhi, and next morning hope to sign an agreement, that's not the way India works. In India, first of all, you have to be, do your homework well before you go there. Mm. Secondly, in India, we always joke, it's a joke, but it's a serious joke, that never go to India as a visitor if, if you're looking for some financial returns. Go and marry India. You will never regret it. Ask any, in, ask any man who has married an Indian woman. Uh, sorry, <laughs> my apologies for this joke, but this is a joke. You see, it's a, it's a, the point is the same applies to India. In India, we take relationships seriously. If you're coming to India, mm. you know, to be part of India as a business, you never, ever regret. 97% is statistics which you can actually get investigated, verified by any agency. 97% of companies who have come to invest in India, they've never gone back and they are having a good time. Most of, most of these companies have made money. Ericsson, for instance, has been in India for more than 100 years. Never regretted it. So I'm saying that when you look at India, market is there, opportunities are plenty. All that you have to do is do your homework well, go and spend some time there before you form any opinion. And if you really spend some time there on the ground, you will never ever fail, therefore you will never ever regret. But Rachel, you represent some of the institutional dimension and even the global institutional uh, capacity here. Mm -hmm. How much can you bridge that uh, fear there is uh, among investors and, and uh, companies that probably have a lot to offer, but really they don't fully dare, or when they dare, they probably even opt for the cherry-picking solutions rather than the really, well, maybe except from SM Power that really has taken some of the least developed countries on, but, but still, you see the picture. This is a challenge. Well, yeah, well it's, it's very nice to be on the stage with private clients and, uh, and uh, public clients. Um, look, we, we say the same thing to everybody, and, then we, you know, and if we have to repeat it seven different ways, seven different times we will, which is if you build a regulatory environment which sends consistent signals, which is well managed, which drives efficiency through the management of the economy, you will reap rewards. And, and that's as true uh, in the UK uh, as it is in Texas, as it is in India, as it is in Morocco or Chile or South Africa. If you reverse yourself in your regulatory approach, if you are capricious in the way in which you manage uh, the, the energy system, you will pay a very high price because investors will overnight uh, take a dim view of uh, how they will seek the return that they wish over the long run. And so we, we can give you example after example of countries that are doing all of the right things and they are reaping the rewards. They are, they are, seeing, the investment, uh, they are seeing the investment flow. So that's one piece of it. The second piece of it is that there is extraordinary innovation in some parts of the renewables market. I mean, solar in particular. And what we have to do is, is keep up to speed with where the financing needs are. I mean, people still think that perhaps, you know, we need lots of angel investors in off-grid solar appliances, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, what's really needed now is working capital because the market is beginning to emerge and we need to get these appliances um, in supply chains out to those markets as they, as they emerge. Uh, and then we can think about going from 500,000, you know, Africans who have 
connectivity due to off-grid solar today and set ourselves a target of five million in three years' time. These kinds of numbers are entirely achievable now. And of course, the same would be true for the off-grid market in, in South Asia, both in India and Bangladesh and elsewhere. So our job is to sort of you know, be abreast of what is truly innovative in the market and find the financial solutions for, for the new issues as they emerge, but also to keep moving, you know, keep repeating and repeating and repeating. That, you know, whether it's green growth you want or brown growth or, you know, managing the economy for the results that you want to achieve means being consistent and being very steadfast about the long-term objectives you seek. Probably would have been, as they've been singing on this scene, super fanta, phenomenalistic, <laughs> uh, if we've managed to land this uh, and even go into further issues on 15 uh, minutes. We haven't got the time for that, but maybe to round up, there are some eager hands here. Uh, on your way out, on solar, uh, your last pitch. No, but I, I think it's important what, what, what was just said. Of course, we will continue to, to look for new technologies, but many of the solutions have already been demonstrated to work. So we, 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 we just need to do more, right? We, we know how it works in South Africa. We know how it works, works in East, Eastern Africa. We see deployment in, in Latin America. We can do more of the same. Uh, we can continue to develop technology, but the business models are already there. Let's do more of the same. And more of the same, you invented the zero. Uh, will you be leaders in finding the new zero scenario, as uh, has been uh, the vision here for India? I mean, your choices will really amount for the mass, uh, while as what we managed to do here in Norway is still rather marginal. So the choices you're making now, Narendra, and your nation, uh, will it go more hydropower, more solar than coal and, and other well, fossil fuels? Well, good question. You see, we are, we are taking a very realistic view. A renewable is a way forward, but at the same time, we cannot afford to say goodbye to coal tomorrow morning. Right. We can't afford to say goodbye to oil tomorrow afternoon, and we can't afford to say, uh, you know, goodbye to natural gas tomorrow evening. It's going to take time. But the point here is countries like Norway, what we can do is that we can shift part of the, you know, solar and renewable R&D facilities to India, or set up R&D facilities in India. The, you know, the cost of technology would come down. At the same time, you had a market available right there. So I think we, if we think that we will develop technologies here and look at India only as a market, I think you're dialing the wrong number. Because for us, today we are heavily dependent on Saudi Arabia for oil. If tomorrow Germany becomes a big renewable superpower, it becomes renewable energy Saudi Arabia, then there's no difference for us. Instead of importing from Saudi Arabia, we'll have to import from Germany. How does it take how does it change the picture for us? We want to change the picture fundamentally on the ground. So we say, if you're coming to India, looking at India, join head, us with there. We have got smart people. Joke again, but true. We, we, we invented zero. So, and we, have got, we are very good at numbers. Indians are very, therefore, we are good in IT. So idea is, you bring whatever you have from Norway, Germany, other country. Let's kind of, you know, bring that, uh, take whatever best is available in India. And the best part of India is you have technology, R&D there, and we have got the market right there. And then also use in India to build bridge to the continent that's going to be, that's hold the promise for future, that's Africa. So I think we need to, need to look, at, look at the picture differently. Just to conclude the last line, if we are looking at India only this way, that we'll go there, make money, come back, report to our shareholders. India is a democracy. India is not dictatorship like China. In India, you have to make the people and everyone there, include the government, a stakeholder. Make a stakeholder, set up R&D facilities there, and see the difference it will make to the life of your shareholders. Thank you, all four. We will leave everyone now with a break. So this is us. Thank you. Thank you.